Since we're on the topic of force vectors, let's take a look at uh, one last problem um, involving Newton's second law and forces. Just before his delousing, uh, Sergeant Crawford masked Justin Bieber on a balance scale and determined Mr. Bieber had a mass of 65 kilograms. On his way from the first floor holding tank to the 26th floor courtroom, Justin was standing on a bathroom scale and it read 620 newtons. Describe the motion of the elevator. All right, so Justin Beaver is on an elevator. He has a mass of 65 kilograms, and uh, the scale he's standing on uh, reads 620 newtons. Why don't you describe exactly uh, what the elevator is doing with as much detail as possible? I'll give you a moment. So uh, here we have uh, Justin Bieber, and uh, he's... Uh, Standing on a oh, that's no good. Someone standing on an elevator. In this case, it's Justin Bieber in an elevator standing on a bathroom scale. Um, <clears throat> so let's uh, draw a free body diagram. Uh, we we're going to circle the object of interest like there. In this case, we're interested in Justin Bieber, and we will uh, draw a free body diagram. Nothing's really happening in the x direction, which is this way. All right, nothing's touching, nothing, 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 till we get to the uh, the bottom of the elevator, uh, or the scale actually, is we have the normal force uh, pushing up, and uh, we have the force of gravity downward. Force of gravity downward. We know the mass of Mr. Bieber, 65 kilograms. 65 kilograms. All yeah, right. And the bathroom scale reads 620 newtons. Now, what you have to uh, know to solve a problem like this is which one of these vectors is the bathroom scale? Is it the normal force or the force of gravity? Uh, well, the bathroom scale is actually this right here, and it's what's pushing up on uh, the person standing on it. So this is going to be the 620 newtons. 620 newtons. And we can calculate the weight. Uh, the weight of this person is Fg equals Mg. 637.7 newtons. All right, I have some extra digits there. Um, all right, so that is uh, the force of 600, we'll say 638 newtons. All right, so this one's bigger uh, than that one. The force of gravity is bigger than the normal force. So clearly, um, we have an acceleration downward. We have an acceleration downward because acceleration equals net force divided by mass. And uh, so the acceleration must be in the direction of the net force. And I see that if I add a bigger f vector, Fg, plus if I add that a smaller one, Fn, I'm going to get, I've started here, ended here, and uh, this is going to be F net. Also, uh, write it sigma F, right? Either way, there we go. So we're going to have a downward acceleration because we have a net force downward. And since we're supposed to give as much detail as possible, uh, let's calculate uh, acceleration equals uh, F net. F net equals 620 newtons minus 638 newtons. We had 620 up, 638 down, divided by the mass. Uh, which is 65 kilograms minus 0.28 meters per second squared. Downward, and we expected it to be downward, and that's a good thing. Uh, so what's happening? Uh, well, he's started at the bottom floor in the, in the lockup, 
and he's going up to the courtroom. If he has a negative acceleration, he must be slowing down. If he has an upward velocity, negative acceleration, he's slowing down. He must be approaching uh, the top floors. So he is slowing down. Slowing down. Uh, with an acceleration of 0.28 meters per second squared downward. All right. There we go. Justin Bieber problem. After that, we had uh, force of friction and... Uh, well, that's another force, so uh, that's a vector, of course. All forces are vectors. We had uh, force of gravity, universal gravitation equation. Uh, that's a vector. Uh, G is a vector, little g equals Fg over m, because the force of gravity certainly is a vector. Little g is a vector when we, we're dealing with the gravitational field strength. The gravitational field strength, like if this is the Earth, uh, the gravitational field strength is uh, this way. Pulling in on it, uh, that's a little g, and it varies depending on how far you are from the Earth. It's in the direction of the force of gravity. If you're hanging out here, and uh, you'll feel a force in the direction of the gravitational field strength. Or if, it was, if you looked at it in terms of the acceleration due to gravity in free fall, uh, if something is free falling, it's going to have an acceleration which is, uh, which is going to be a g, it's downward. Uh, we say negative g, but that just means downward. Um, next, we had uh, momentum. Momentum is certainly a vector. Momentum is a vector, and it's in the direction of the object's velocity. And then we also had impulse equals f net times t. That's the definition of it. And the impulse is in the direction of the net force, and, and they are both in the direction of the change in momentum of an object, uh, which is in the same direction as the object's change in velocity. <clears throat> All vectors. Um, and if you review uh, the projectile motion uh, video that I made earlier, um, you saw that, uh, you know, if, if uh, a ball is launched at an angle like this, um, it can be broken down, velocity can be broken down into components, um, and so forth. Um, so review the, other, uh, review the other videos if you want to get more information. All right, here's a type of uh, force problem that... Uh, uh, causes people uh, difficulty. It's an inclined plane problem. Um, it was on the quarter test. A uh, three kilogram wooden block on a wooden ramp starts from rest and slides 2.5 meters down the ramp. How long does it take to reach the bottom? I'm going to circle the block and I'm going to draw my free body diagram and I'm going to tilt my axes. Uh, well, I didn't tilt them very well, but anyways, you get the idea. Uh, this way is X, this way is Y. Uh, my tilt should be parallel with that. It's not quite, but hey, what can you do? Uh, and uh, so in contact, we have the normal force. And uh, this is wood on wood, so we're going to have some friction. Uh, friction's going to oppose the motion down the ramp. So we have the force of friction uh, up the ramp. And uh, those are the only contact forces. And we have, in this case, uh, force of gravity down. We will always have the force of gravity. Sometimes we might have other forces here. Uh, the key really is to tilt the axes and to uh, break your gravity vector. Uh, here's 30 degrees. Your gravity force vector into its x. So I drew an x component parallel with the ramp and a y component along the y-axis. This will be fgy. This will be fgx. And the sum of the forces in the x direction. Uh, let's see. It looks like we're going to be accelerating along the x direction because um, uh, we're sliding down. Starts from rest and slides down the ramp. If it's starting from rest and sliding down, it must accelerate. It starts from zero, speeding up. So we must have a mass 
times an acceleration. Uh, we have the force of friction. And downward we have uh, F G sine of 30 degrees. All right, we had to recognize that I have a right triangle here. This is the opposite side of the right triangle. That is going to be the sine function. This is the adjacent side of the right triangle. That is going to be the cosine function. All right, so we have this going up, that pulling down, and that equals mass times acceleration. In the y direction, uh, and we're going to need the y direction because we're going to need the normal force uh, to figure out what the force of friction is in this problem. Uh, there's going to be no acceleration. This is not going to accelerate in this direction. Uh, so we have uh, F normal is positive and uh, minus uh, the force of gravity in the y direction, which is Fg cosine of theta equals zero. All right. And uh, let's see, this is wood on wood and it's sliding. 0 0.30 is the coefficient of friction. Oh, we must have the mass here. Three kilograms. Let me write that in there. Three kilograms is how much stuff that has. Three, three kilograms of stuff. The normal force equals Fg cosine of theta. And we want the acceleration. Um, well, the force of friction, this is kinetic friction because it's sliding. Uh, the force of kinetic friction is mu times a normal force. Of course, remember, this is only for kinetic. For static, the force of static friction, force of friction static is an inequality. It is less than or equal mu fn uh, static. Mu fn static gives the maximum force of uh, static friction. So mu times a normal force, fn minus fg sine of 30 degrees equals acceleration divided by mass. I just divided through by that. Uh, that's a normal force. And so that is mu, the normal force is Fg cosine of theta minus Fg sine of theta at 30 degrees. Ooh. I don't know why. Sometimes I put 30, sometimes I put theta. All right, well, let's just uh, simplify this a little bit. We go Fg mu cosine of theta minus sine of theta divided by m. All right, well, let's even do it more. Let's uh, uh, replace that with mg. M the m's go away. Interesting. The mass of the block doesn't affect its speed down the ramp. Fascinating. Um, why is that negative? That is negative. It should be negative. It should be down that way. What was the question? How long does it take to get to the bottom of the ramp? Oh, well, we know the acceleration. So we're going to have to start erasing. It's going to go 2.5 meters. Uh, v initial is zero. Uh, how long does it take? All right. Um, and of course, uh, on your reference table, they call this uh, distance. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we could try El Grande. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. That's the way they write it in your reference table. One point four six seconds. I think you should get one point four six seconds down the ramp. What's the speed at the bottom? All right, how fast is it going? All right, well that's kind of beating a dead horse, but we'll we'll go for it. We'll play their little game. Uh, let's see, v final, v initial. All right, I think we're it's time for squaring. <laughs> Th 
three point four four meters per second. All right, I'll see you later. It's three. Fantastic. Thank you.